Okay, today we have Foxwell NT510. This is a multi-system scanner designed to work with all brands, but this is not just a generic OBD2 scanner and that uh, you already seen. Um, this is uh, uh, preloaded with the VAX software on it, so we can connect with uh, Volkswagen, Audi, Seat and Skoda cars and perform dealer level diagnostic on it. So in the box you will have the carrying bag, the device itself, uh, user manual and a USB cable for software updates. Mm, uh, the device has a standard navigation buttons and three function buttons over here which we, you can assign to some shortcuts uh, and based on what's currently on the screen those three function buttons will have different uh, functions. In the setup menu you have a number of settings that you can adjust but the most important part is that there are 16 languages over here including Polish. You have a color LCD screen, there's a micro SD card pre-installed over here, there's a USB port at the bottom and about a meter and a half of the OBD2 cable which is more than enough to operate this device even from the passenger side. Before connecting it to the car I've checked if there are some software updates. The process took about 5, maybe 10 minutes. You have to create Foxwell account, then register your device, then on the device itself enter the update mode and after that uh, your PC will um, see this uh, device, the software on it and it will check if there are some new software updates available for you. You can also extend the functionality of this device uh, to other brands uh, by buying for 60 bucks each um, software package to support uh, different cars. So you don't have to buy a different device to diagnose and fix uh, different brands. For example, there's a package for Volvo, for BMW and pretty much every other popular brand there's a software package for it. Okay, so when I was sure that the device is up to date, I hooked it up to BMW, which is not supported by the um, special functionality. I've used the generic OBD2 function. There were no problems, it work, uh, works as expected, it connects with the ECU, uh, reads and clears codes, you can uh, check live data from the car, and every other generic OBD2 functionality works here um, without any problem. Next I took it to Volkswagen Tiguan 2015 2.0 TDI engine and uh, checked how it will perform uh, with the um, custom Volkswagen Audi Seat Skoda software over here. I've started with Autoscan which checks all the available modules in your car and just give you a, gives you a list of those modules and if there are some um, faults stored in the module. So this gives you a quick overlook if the car is in good shape and then you can select individual modules that were found in the car and over here we can see what is available to do. You can read and clear codes but you can also check the coding in the car, also you can change the coding if you know um, what you are doing because uh, there's no um, long coding helper over here unfortunately. But this is a, a great function if you want to replace uh, for example your instrument cluster, you can um, check the coding uh, before doing that and when you have installed the new uh, control module you can enter the old coding to your new hardware, thanks to that you have a uh, a fixed car. There's a lot of other dealer level functions over here. For example, you can read and change adaptation channel values, which will help you activate some functions in your car or adjust some functions like uh, LED brightness or um, enable the welcome ceremony of your instrument cluster where, where the needle will sweep all the way uh, to the end and back. I've also performed some output tests uh, like uh, over here where I'm checking the speedometer if it works correctly. Of course you can also read live data from your car, not only from the engine where you can uh, check uh, some parameters of the sensors, but uh, every other module that install that's installed in the car. For example over here I'm checking if the gearbox paddles are working correctly. When I press shift up I can see on the display that uh, the button is uh, working correctly. 
I'm pretty impressed with the functionality that we have over here. There's a lot of other functions that you know from uh, other advanced software and uh, diagnostic uh, interfaces. If you are not feeling comfortable with the direct coding and adaptation changes, you can use some quick procedures that are installed in this uh, interface. You can perform DPF re regeneration, you can release parking brake for um, brake path change, you can reset a service reminder, um, adjust the throttle body, register new battery or perform the adaptation of steering wheel sensor. This is a very powerful device and like all powerful devices you can fix a lot with it but also break a lot with it. Luckily you can record your diagnostic sessions and play it back later so you have a better understanding of what was done which makes it easier to go back to the previous settings on your car. When it goes to my personal feelings about this device, uh, I love it. I love it. The only thing that I would um, change is remove the help button over here and make, make the up and down arrows a little bit bigger because right now I'm not using the help button and I would love if those navigation buttons were, uh, were the same size. Not only the left right which is big enough but also the up and down. Also I do recommend leaving the uh, button beep on just so you know that it was actually pressed because when you are looking at uh, live data sometimes it gets a bit slow. You can press next and not be sure if you pressed it uh, correctly because the screen is uh, frozen for about half a second and just having this beep makes, uh, makes it easier. You are just sure that the button was pressed and uh, you just have to wait this extra half a second to see the um, refreshed data on the screen. As I said, there's no long coding helper over here, but if you are determined enough, you can change coding of every module in the car. Of course, it's not the easiest thing to do, but it's possible with this device. If you know what the coding should be, you can input it on the device. The on-screen keyboard is pretty small, but that's the limitation on the screen. You cannot make a bigger on-screen keyboard than you have the screen. It's not the fastest method of input, but it works. You can check short technical specification of this device in the description below this video. Also, there's a link to online store if you want to buy one of those for your car, for your workshop. And give me a thumbs up if you like this review and check my channel for other reviews and automotive tutorials. Also, you can subscribe for future videos. Thank you for watching and see you soon.